This goes to show a little bit of the, the mercilessness, the um, implacability of wicked people that are willing to just hurt people and persecute and fight even though they've, they've, they haven't been done wrong at all. And what we see here, starting off in Psalm 35, of course, we just see, hey, they're, they're setting traps and doing this. I didn't do anything against them. Psalm 69, verse 4 says, They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. And this is giving more, you know, obviously it's a different psalm, but, but he's, he's now talking about people, again, that are hating him without cause, which when you live the Christian life, you're going to have people that hate you without cause. Now, there is a cause because they hate God. There's a cause because they hate righteousness. There's a cause, but it's not a legitimate cause. Right? Hating someone for, for obeying God is not legitimate. There's nothing, there's nothing legitimate about that at all. So without cause, and he's saying in Psalm 694, they didn't hate me without cause. They're more than the hairs of my head. So they're, they're just in new world, and they're all over the place. There's so many more of them against me. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. And then in Psalm 694, it says, Then I restored that which I took not away. He said, it got to the point where I'm giving things back to them that I never even took from them. Like, I'm just trying to appease them and satisfy them because they're just coming after me. There's so many of them, and they're, they're lying about me, and they're saying I've done them wrong and stuff. So he's just like, okay, fine, here, just, just take it, whatever. You know, I didn't do anything wrong to you, but I'm restoring that. I didn't even take anything away from you. And this is a way of, of trying to be a peacemaker and trying to just get through without having to have these physical fights and confrontations like this and to make things work. But you know what? The enemy is never going to be satisfied, which is why we have to go to the Lord to protect us and defend us. Because our fight is not a physical one. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, the Bible says, but they're spiritual. That we're in a spiritual battle. We have to put on the, the armor uh, you know, the full armor of God. And all of the armor of God is, is, is spiritual defense. It's, it's gearing yourself up and getting ready to stand against the fiery darts of the devil. And having done all to stand, to just be able to get through it. We don't need to go in and, and demolish you know, go out looking for fights and, you know, uh, the, the Pentecostals hoop and holler and they're shouting at the devil and doing all this other stuff. Look, we just need to be able to stand and get through. We're going to stand up for the Lord. We're not going to back down. We're not going to compromise. We're going to go out and try to reach the lost and reach people. But our, we're not going to go off. Like, I, I, don't, I don't spend all my time trying to get in fights even with reprobates yeah. because I'm trying to reach the lost you know what? I'll pray to God. Say, God, you know, you take care of them. Take care of these wicked people that are trying to stop us from doing good. Amen, amen. We're not going to go and, and get involved in, in, you know, some fleshly fight or whatever against them. We're going to fight against the spiritual wickedness in high places. But ultimately, we want God to help clear our path so that we can just do the good that he has for us to do. And let him deal with judging those that need the judgment. Because he will.